Oligo Fa 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 I command them to the abyss. Good morning, Holy Ghost. I worship you. I adore you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. Take over me. Take over me. Take over me. Lead me. Lead me. Guide me. Guide me. Guide me. Protect me. Protect me. Protect me. Bring my blessings today. Bring my blessings Bring today. Bring my blessings today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The way that prayer was so nice, we could have prayed and prayed and prayed. It was so wonderful to pray. You know, this time in prayer when you're praying, you don't, you don't feel like stopping. So this morning is that day that we are praying, I just enjoy in praying. We could just pray for hours. Okay, to na- to this morning, I want to s- us to go through the Word of God together, talking about the Word of God that says that, when do we have to stop praying? When do we have to stop praying? Is there a time that we have to stop praying? Is there a time where prayer, it has been more than enough? Where you can say that, no, I prayed, it's more than enough. I have to stop praying. Where do I, when do we have to stop praying? When do we have to stop praying? You know, let us go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says in verse number 9, this is then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hello be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. We can't even say forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And then Jesus Christ there, he said that give us our daily bread. And because he's saying that give us our daily bread, it means that we have to pray every day. He did not say that, give us our weekly bread. He did not say, give us our monthly bread. He did not say, give us our annual bread. But he said that, give us our daily bread. And because he said that give us our daily bread, it means that we have to pray every day. We have to pray every day. Then that means we can't say that, oh, I've been praying, you know, I've been praying a lot. Then that means I have to stop praying. Because God from that, it means that he expects us to pray every day. Every day of our life, God expects you to pray. Every day of your life, God expects you to pray. Then we must pray every day of our lives. Then when do we stop praying? 
You know, I was asking others this morning to say that if you lie yesterday, does it mean that you must stop praying? If you sin, does it mean that you have to stop praying? You know, because sometimes people have have seen other people that ah, this one have sinned. And because this one have sinned, they say, why is he still going to church? Why is he still praying? Why is he still going to church? Why is he still praying? Because this one have seen. If we read there in the book of Matthew chapter 6, and we read there in verse number 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgiven our debtors. Then that tells us sin must never be a reason why we should stop praying. Sin must never be a reason why you should stop praying, but it must be a reason why you pray more. Sin must be a reason why you pray more, not the reason why you must stop praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Because who can forgive our sins anyway? Who can forgive your sin anyway? No one except God. And God can forgive your sins. God can forgive our sins Amen. when we pray. Amen. When we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then sin must never be a reason why you say that, ah, I'm stopping to pray now. It's like I have sinned. You begin to judge yourself and say, oh, I have sinned. God is not happy with me. I have sinned. God is not happy with me. God loves those who come to him with repentance. Who comes to him and say that, oh God, forgive us our sins. Because what the Bible is talking about, and forgive us our death, forgive us our sins. As we have forgiven our debtors. Because at the end of the day, you are not perfect. You are not perfect. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At the end of the day, you are not perfect. And if at the end of the day you are not perfect, that's why you also have to forgive those who are sinning against Amen. you. Amen. Those who are doing something wrong to you, you have to forgive them. Hallelujah. Amen. Say fa ya 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 ya. Fa ya 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 ya. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. Amen. I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. Enjoying the word of God. When do you have to stop praying? Let's say you have been praying, asking for a job. And when you have been praying and asking for a job, when you have been praying and asking for a job, and you have been asking for a job for long, and it seems as if you have prayed and you are not getting an answer, does it mean that you have to stop? When are you supposed to stop praying? Maybe someone is not feeling well and they've been praying for God to heal them. Does it mean that they must stop praying? Does it mean that they must stop praying and say, oh, it is as if God cannot heal this thing? No way. That does not mean that you must stop praying. Even though you have been praying for that job for long. 
Have you been praying for that job for long? It means that you must accelerate. Add prayer and fasting. Add planting a seed. But don't stop. Pray until something happens. The Bible talks about a man by the name of Elijah. The Bible says that Elijah, it was the time that he was praying, praying for a rain, for it to rain. Then the Bible says that as he was praying, he sent his servant to go and look, to look for the sign that is about to rain. The Bible says that the servant of Elijah went there and they see nothing. Come back saying there's nothing, sir. Elijah prayed, continued to pray. And he sent that man again. Go again. When he went at the game to go and look for a sign, there was nothing, there was no cloud. He came back, Elijah continued to pray until it's the seventh time. And the Bible says that on the seventh time, the Bible said that he came and said that I saw, I saw a cloud as big as man's fist. That's when Elijah began to stop praying because he knew that it was about to rain. He knew that the huge rain was coming. But if you are hearing that, how Elijah prayed for it to rain, he did not give up because he did not see any sign. Until the seventh time, when he see that his prayer was answered. Then don't stop praying also until you see what you are praying for. Because one thing that I've learned about prayer over years, that prayer is so powerful. Amen. And prayer cannot fail. As God cannot fail, prayer cannot fail. Amen. Amen. Over years, I've learned that, that as God cannot fail, prayer cannot fail. If you pray enough and you believe enough, there is nothing that God cannot do for you. Amen. As the Bible says that in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse number 37, that with God all things are possible. As with God, all things are possible. Also in prayer, all things are possible. As long as you, you add your prayer with faith. Amen. Once you believe, there is nothing that God can do for you. Amen. And that means if you are looking for God, for, for God to do something for you, there must never be any room to stop praying. Amen. At no way you must stop praying until you see what you are believing God for. You must not stop praying. Amen. You must not stop praying Amen. until you see what you are believing God for. Then listen now. You get what you're looking for. You get what you're looking for. You get an answer. Doesn't mean that you have to stop. No, you don't have to stop. You don't have to stop praying. Yes, maybe you can, maybe you can stop praying to say, God give me that job because you got that job. But prayer as a, an act of prayer, you don't have to stop. Once you get what you are asking for, there is another prayer to pray. A thanksgiving prayer. And a fellowship prayer. Because when he answers your prayer, it's a proof. When God answers your prayer, it's a proof that 
is Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is the same that is alive. When he's the is the same that is alive, and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. After prayer is another is time. It's time to begin a fellowship prayer and a thanksgiving prayer because now onwards you will be praying with the proof that is the living God. Amen. But does it mean that you must say that, oh, I was looking for a job, I got my job, that now I can keep quiet. Does it mean that you must say that, oh, I was looking for a healing, I got my healing, now I can stop walking with God, I can stop praying. Then what does, this, what does it mean? It means that as a child of God, you don't have to stop praying. There is no way to stop praying. Prayer is like breathing. It's like breathing. When you are praying, it's as if you are a spiritualist, it's as if you are breathing. The day that you stop breathing, you die. The day that you stop breathing, you die. Spiritually is the matter of life and death. It's a matter of life and death. You don't have to stop praying. Because the day that you, you stop praying, spiritually you begin to wither. As long as you are alive, you must continue to pray. Amen. As long as we are alive, we must continue to pray. Amen. And never stop praying for any cost. Amen. Never stop praying for any cost. But as long as you are alive, pray. As long as you are alive, pray. Amen. As long as you are alive, continue to pray. Amen. Pray. Pray, Mzalwane. Pray, child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Fire, yeah, I was teaching the same word at the clinic. It was so fireous there. So fireous. So powerful. It was so powerful. Some were healed. And after that prayer, I hear this man saying, this other man, I was about to go. And he was asking me, Pastor, where is your church? I want to come to your church. Mm. Well, if I want to come to church, where is your church? And I'm telling him about the online story. But the way it was so far as, I was like, oh, where is your church? Okay, if you are talking about, give us your phone number. That's what they were saying. Give us, uh, we want that number. I didn't, <laughs> today I was not forthcoming, coming with the number. Then I had to give them the number. But it was so far as. What am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say prayer. Continue to pray. Mm -hmm. Don't stop praying. Never feel it will be a lie of the devil when the de if you end up feeling, oh, I've prayed more than enough. I have prayed enough. Oh, I've been praying every day. It will be the lie of the devil. It's going to be the lie of the devil. If you end up feeling, I've prayed more than enough. Maybe I have to reduce my prayers. 
Maybe I have, it will be the lie of the devil. You don't have to reduce your prayers. You don't have to stop. But what we can do is to increase our prayers. Because the more we pray, the more we see results, the more we get results. As the Bible says that in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible reads as follows. Verse number 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he reward those who diligently seek him. Who earnestly seek him. Then... Acceleration's prayer is an expression of honesty. The more you increase praying, it is your your level of your earnestly seeking Him. How earnestly are you going to pray? How earnestly are you going to seek Him? that you can increase and show God that you can increase and even be able to show God that I mean business and I'm serious and I'm seeking you I need you more it's the same thing that the Bible talks about in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 Verse number 13. The Bible says that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. That means God is saying that you will seek me and you, when you seek me with all of your heart, you can increase the level and the rate of seeking. The level of seeking you can increase it. And that's what you're not, we need to do. Not to reduce prayer, but increase prayer. Amen. Looking at the schedules of our prayers. We say that, oh, I want to pray more than to pray less. But I want to pray more. I want to seek him more. Rather than seeking him less. Amen. We, want, we must want to pray more and to seek him more. That must be what we're supposed to do. To seek him more. To pray more. When you look sometimes in your schedule and show, make sure that I'm not reducing in my prayer. I'm not reducing in my fasting. I'm not reducing in my practicing of the word. Make sure that I am increasing. Because you're trying to to increase and to maintain your rate of seeking. Amen. Your rate of seeking is very, very much important. Actually, in, in, in life of some of us who we have got scheduled prayer, it's easy to, ma- to monitor. Amen. Because you have got a scheduled prayer. It is not as if uh, we are we are praying randomly. We are not praying randomly. 
We have got scheduled prayer. But if you realize, okay, I used to be praying in the morning. I used to be praying in the afternoon. I used to be praying in the evening. I used to be praying in the, in the midnight. But it is as if I'm missing midday service. Or you go like, oh, you begin to introspect yourself to say, oh, I can't lose it. I can't reduce my level of prayer. I must institute it again. Oh, I th- maybe you have not been waking up midnight. You know, you have not been waking up midnight. And when you have been not waking up in the midnight, maybe even not catching up. Because there's a catching up. Catching up, what I'm talking about, it is when you were supposed to wake up on the midnight prayer. And you don't wake up on the midnight prayer. You wake up at 3 o'clock. You say, oh, even though nobody's praying, I'm going to cover for that midnight. I can't lose it. Because to a child of God, prayer must be a burden. To you, child of God, prayer must be a burden. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. It must be a burden. Some people, they may not understand when they look at your life. Why do you pray? What are you achieving with your prayers? Because it is sometimes, remember, our prayers are are our personal walk with God. Yes, sometimes people will see the results of our prayers. Sometimes, yes, our prayers are working in your family. There's peace. Prayers are working in your family. People are getting jobs. People are prayers are working in your family, and people are alive. People are not dying. But people may not see that that is the direct result of your prayers. People may think that that is not direct results of your prayers. People may be thinking that maybe it's, it's just something that is happening uh, by itself. They might be thinking that, yeah, it must be, this is maybe happening by mistake. People are just alive. Maybe they are, they are just eating healthy. Maybe nobody is sick, but is, people are not sick in your family because of your prayers. But uh, but people not taking as if it's the result of your prayers. And they begin to wonder, why are you praying the way you are praying? Is it really necessary for you to pray? Is it really necessary for you to pray? But to you as a child of God, it's necessary for you to pray because what is happening in your life and in your family, it is not by chance. It is not by accident. It's because of your prayers. Amen. The Bible says that in the book of Isaiah chapter 62, verse number 9. I have posted a watchman on your wo- and your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who calls on the Lord, give yourself no rest. That's what God says. Give yourself no rest. Continue to pray. Because what happens in Jerusalem, what happens in your family, what happened in that company, what happened in that country is the result of the watchmen who must never give themselves no rest but continue to call upon the Lord. Amen. Then that's when you have matured and understand that prayer is necessary and prayer is life and prayer becomes a burden. Amen. And that means you will say that the reason why I did not bury anyone last year it is because of God in my life. Amen. And it's not just because of God in your life. It's because of your prayers. 
That's why he did not bury anyone last, last year. There was no any funeral that you had to attend. That it was so close to you that you have to attend. Because when funerals are too close, you have to leave everything and you have to attend. The reason why, maybe sometimes, it was because of your, there was no, no time that you had to go to the hospital and leave everything. Because if someone so close to you is there, you don't have a choice. You have to be the one who goes there. I'm trying to say to you, God have posted you a watchman to be the watchman, to be the principality of your family, the principality of your country, and the principality of your company. And when you understand that, that's when prayer becomes a burden. That if you missed prayer, you say that it can't be missed. I will still compensate for it. It needs to be prayed. Because I know what it is doing in my life. Amen. When you don't know what it is doing, when you miss a service, it's nothing. When you meet a prayer time, it's nothing. This one, you have not yet understood their position. They have not yet understood their responsibility. But when you understand your responsibility, you will say, it's time to pray. I have to pray. It's time to fast. I have to fast. <coughs> it's time for this. I have to. Because you have understand your responsibility and how God works and how God moves. God does not move by chance. God does not move by chance. People don't understand it. God is looking for men that you can agree with in order to move in your life, in order to move in your family, in order to move in your country, in order to move in your company. God is looking for men to agree with. And that man to agree with in prayer. Because even the word of God gives you also the substance of faith that you can use when you are praying. Amen. And you'll be the man, the, the man who causes God to move in that horizon. That's why you are the man of God. You are the woman of God. Directly or indirectly, you are the man of God because you are the one whom he agree with in order to move. Without you, he needs your prayers. It's when you have grown up and you are beginning to understand that God needs my prayers. Amen. Therefore, I have to pray. Therefore, I must pray. Amen. I can't skip prayer. God needs my fasting. Therefore, I will fast. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Before you know these things, you will need to be pushed to pray. You will need to be begged to pray. You will need to be pushed to fast. Begged to fast. But when prayer has become a responsibility, nobody will push you. When prayer and fasting have become a responsibility, you know you are God's representative. You are Christ's ambassador. You are heaven's employee. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. You know, you are heaven deployee. You have been deployed by heaven to be in that family. Amen. You have been deployed by heaven to be in that company, to be in that country. Amen. That's why now you will do heavenly activities 
when we are talking about prayer, it's heaven activities. These are not earthly activities. These are heavenly activities. When we are talking about prayer, it's heaven activities. They are not earthly activities. That's why those who are in the world, they don't pray. But those who are heavenly pray. Conducting their heavenly mandate. Heaven ambassadors pray. And are you heavenly? Are you a heaven citizen? One thing that yet they identify us as heaven citizens is that we pray. Because when you're praying, it is as if now you are talking to God. Giving the report and putting in requests for tomorrow. For what heaven must actually, how heaven must assist. It is as if you are having a meeting with heaven. Updating heaven. That's why now, you know, when you are praying, some of those prayers will be the prayers in spirit. La Kranto Brian Talagaya. Allowing the Holy Ghost to use you to update heaven, to download things from heaven. Not only for yourself, for your family, for your country, for your company. This is heaven ambassador. This is heaven representative who is doing his heavenly mandate, which is to pray. Praying when a prayer has become a burden, you will pray whether you feel like praying or not. Amen. You will pray whether you feel like, like praying or not. You know, I was telling others in this morning to tell them that we need to bath every day. Every day we need to bath. Every day we need to eat. So prayer is a necessity. Prayer is a necessity. We need to pray every day. It is supposed to be your, your, one of your most holy act, which is to pray. Praying when you feel like praying. Praying when you feel like you don't have to pray, but pray. Talk to God. Talk to God for your family. Talk to God for your country. Amen. Talk to God for nations. Amen. Because you are what? You are Christ ambassadors. Because even for some plans from heaven to happen here on earth will need your prayers. God wants to do something here on earth. But for God to do those things, he will need your prayers. He will need your prayers. He needs your prayers. Amen. I'm telling you this, moment, this morning that God needs your prayers. Amen. He needs those prayers. He want, he's, there's a lot that he wants to do. And as there's a lot that he, God wants to do, some of the things you won't be able to do if you don't pray. Amen. But if you pray, you will be able to do and to move. And you as a child of God must pray. Amen. Then pray as a heaven ambassador with confidence. With confidence. With boldness. Don't pray as if you're pushing time. Don't pray as if you're pushing time. Pray. Your prayers are important. Mm -hmm. With your prayers, God is saving lives. God is blessing many. And God is destroying a lot of works of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Canceling a lot of plans of darkness. Using your prayers Amen. as a watchman. 
That's why God is saying that I have pasted a watchman on your walls, Jerusalem. Which one is your Jerusalem? Your Jerusalem is your family. Your Jerusalem is your country. Your Jerusalem is your co- hey, it's your company that you are working for. Your business, its nations. And the Bible said that those watchmen, they will never be silent day and night. Never be silent. Pray always. And the Bible says that once you have done, you who called on the Lord, give yourself no rest. Pray all the time. Pray all the time. And you will see God is going to move this year because of your prayers. Amen. God is going to do great things because of your prayers. Can you say, my day is blessed? My day is blessed. My family is blessed. My family is blessed. My career is blessed. My career is blessed. Our countries are blessed. Our countries are blessed. Everything is turning around for my good. Everything is turning around for my good. Turning around for my good. I will not die before my time. I will not die before my time. I will not die before my time. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be sick in my life. I will never be broke in my life. I will never be broke in my life. I will never be broke in my life. Prosperity is mine. Prosperity is mine. Prosperity is mine. Success is mine. Success is mine. Success is mine. Favor is mine. Favor is mine. Favor is mine. Say devil. 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 Take off your hands. Take off your hands. From my everything. From my everything. Say I lose angels now. I lose angels now. Say it like a minute. I lose angels now. I lose angels now. Angels. Angels. Bring my harvest. Bring my harvest. My miracles. My miracles. My testimonies. My testimonies. My jobs. Angels. Usher me. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. In everything that I do. In everything that I do. Represent me. Present me. Present me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Bless me today. Bless me today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. With your power. With your power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. From today, From today I, am I am born again. I am saved. I am saved. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love. Surely goodness and love. Shall follow me. Follow me. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I dwell in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to say to us this morning, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a successful day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye.